I can't make a video on a budget friendly knife without somebody blowing up the comments telling me that I was wrong because I didn't talk about the CJRB Pyrite. How's it going everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And this is the CJRB Pyrite, the button lock, the steel budget banger from CJRB, also known as Artisan Cutlery, that's taken the world by hype storm. And I mean it when I say that I cannot make a budget knife video without somebody telling me that, that I'm wrong, that that knife isn't the best budget knife, because this is. You asked for this. I spent my own money. This is not a review unit. This is my knife. I've had a chance to carry it. I did not do a, an unboxing and first impressions because I actually wanted to experience it before I started giving opinions, no matter what those opinions are. You see, there's a lot of really good budget knives out there. Some of them are hyped, overhyped. Some of them are not, and they're really, really good. I've got a couple in mind right now that I think are worth a comparison to this knife. We're gonna talk about the good, we're gonna talk about the bad, we're gonna talk about the, uh, This is the CJRB Pyrite. Let's go. In front of me, we have three knives. We've got, of course, the CJRB Pyrite, which we are gonna be talking about today, mostly. And then we have the Best Techman Ronin, as well as the Petrified Fish Victor. Now, the reason why I have these two knives out here is because these are both knives that I've already reviewed, and I honestly believe that they are amazing budget knives. Now, each time I posted a video on one of these knives, people would always flood my comment section with comments about the CJRB Pyrite and why I don't know what I'm talking about until I reviewed this knife because this is the true budget king. And I don't know what I'm talking about because button locks, button locks, button locks, Pyrite. So I'm gonna give it its day in the sun. We're gonna talk about these two knives at the end and we're gonna do a short comparison about these two knives at the end. So if you want to see that, make sure you hang around till then. Until then, let's talk about this pyrite. We're going to talk about the good and we're going to talk about the really not so good. So let's start off with the specifications, shall we? It is in fact a button lock. It has steel handle scales and ARR RPM9, or as I like to call it, RPM9, the pirate steel from Artisan Cutlery. Uh, it's a powder metallurgy steel that they developed, and it's going to perform a lot like 9CR18MOV, um, or at least that's what all of the pundits will tell you, is that it's basically powder metallurgy 9CR18MOV. So take that as you will. Uh, it is nicely milled out on these handle scales. So the internals are very nicely milled out. It has a deep carry steel stamped pocket clip, barrel spacers, or as I like to call them standoffs. And the pocket clip is in fact reversible. For those of you who care about it, you do have a lanyard hole. So that's kind of cool. As well as nice ergonomics. These edges are actually very nicely knocked down and rounded out. And you do have these this little bit of a finger chamfering right there. So you have a nice, comfortable, and confident grip. It does have a finger cutout, and thank the Lord, it also has jimping. So you can get a really competent grip on this knife and you can get as much control as you want over that. That's gonna make it very carry friendly and very useful for everyday cutting jobs and tasks. If you put it in the reverse grip, uh, you can of course get a nice reverse grip on here. And this one has the Warncliffe blade. Now to go along with the pirate steel, as I like to call it, uh, this is the Warncliffe blade. So it's the Warney pyrite, or as I like to call it, the horny pirate. All jokes aside, uh, yeah, the action is good. It's running on ceramic bearings. And much to my dismay, it does not actually have a single-sided captive pivot. The weight is gonna be coming in right around the three and a half ounce mark range. Artisan Cutlery lists it at 3.7 ounces. When I weighed it myself, it came in at about 3.67. So close enough. Uh, we'll go ahead and say that your mileage may 
vary. Now that we've gotten the specs out of the way and what you can expect out of this knife, let's start talking about the good things. The ceramic bearings make that action very, very smooth. Uh, you'll notice that the blade is nicely centered and once it's deployed, there's really not any blade play to speak of. Uh, maybe a tiny bit, but it's so insignificant that I don't even necessarily think that it's worth mentioning. Uh, I really enjoy the smooth feel in the hand and because the scales are also stone washed, it provides this really nice aesthetic which continues from handle scale to blade. Uh, despite the fact that this clip is not my favorite design, it slides in and out of the pocket with ease. So there's that. It's got great action. It's very fidget friendly. The button has absolutely zero stick and it's extremely fidget friendly. Is this a knife that I think you could take with you and get everyday cutting tasks done with and feel good about using it? Absolutely. Would I recommend it if you like button locks? Absolutely. I think this is a great option for people who like button locks. Now, let's talk about the things that I do not like. I do not like the lack of disclosure about what steel exactly our handle scales are made out of. You know what? We would care a whole lot if we didn't know what steel the blade was made out of. Why don't we care more about knowing the steel that the handle scales are made out of? I'm assuming, and this is a big assumption because Artisan Cutlery's website does not tell you, but I'm assuming that this is a stainless steel. So let's assume that you don't have to worry about corrosion resistance. Okay. However, let's talk about toughness because if it's a stainless steel, it may or may not be very tough. Is it 14C? Is it 440C? Is it ARR PM9, which is also a stainless steel? What is it? We don't know. We're guessing. Now, is that a huge deal? Maybe not. Maybe not because I don't know where people live. I don't know uh, how important corrosion resistance or toughness is to you, especially on a button lock knife. I'm just saying that it's worth asking. It's worth knowing. So, Artisan Cutlery, if you're watching this, let us know in the comments section down below what steel is your handle skills made out of? I would definitely like to know. Uh, next thing I don't like is this pocket clip. Now the pocket clip is serviceable, it does work, and it does not necessarily get in the way of ergonomics. A lot of that has to do with the fact that this knife is thinner than I typically like. However, it is hideous, and they could have made it even better had they inset that pocket clip into the actual scales itself. A little bit of extra milling and they could have inset that pocket clip and it would have been great. Now the pocket clip is reversible so that is a plus. However, I think that that's a little bit of an oversight. Huge deal at this price point? Definitely not. But it is something that I'm going to pick apart when we start talking about the best budget knives that are currently out there. Moving on, and this is probably my biggest gripe about this knife. There is detent lash. You see that? There is a lot of slop there, and you can feel it when you shake the knife. Is this something that's consistent with this specific model and this specific design? I have no idea. This is the only one that I've ever held in my hands, so this is the only one that I can base my opinions off of. I've heard some people say no. But I've also heard that from people who are desperately in love with this knife and the reviews that other channels have done on this knife, they gave it a lot of praise. So did they just buy into the hype and they're not willing to actually notice that this is a thing? Maybe, I don't know. I will say this, that is concerning. Not in the short run. Right now there's no issues with lockup and I'm not worried about the knife you know, coming open, but that is sloppy. And for a knife that has been declared as the best budget knife, it's not necessarily what I would consider as acceptable if you're going to be making that claim. So we're going to find out because I'm going to be getting another one. CJRB is releasing these pyrites with a lot of different materials and a lot of different options, as well as premium material options, things like 20 CV and carbon fiber and even titanium. You can get these as primo as you want. The one that I'm really excited about is going to be released on the White Mountain Knives website next month with textured frag pattern aluminum handle scales and the same awesome worn cliff slash reverse tanto style blade. Is it just this knife or is this consistent across the board with all of them? That is a tolerance issue that I do not tolerate. So, now that we've talked about the knife, I've given you my thoughts, I've given you the good, I've given you the bad. 
Have I given you the price? It's uh, $59. Pretty good. Pretty good on the price. Let's go ahead and do our comparison of the other two knives, the other elephants, the other budget bangers in the room. Neither one of these knives have any detent lash or slop at all. You can't feel the blade move when you shake it. The detents are nice and crispy. And so is the action. All three of these knives do share some things in common. Here's what they share in common. Good blade steels for the price range. They're all in the budget price range of $50, give or take. And they all have decent materials. The ergonomics on the Victor, in my opinion, are vastly better than either of these other two knives. These other two knives also have single-sided captive pivots. They both have ceramic bearings. This one specifically has 14C28N, which I'm a huge fan of, and the B-Lock, which some people like and some people don't like. It's basically an axis lock. Uh, the detent and the action on the Ronin is superior to the Pyrite, as well as on the Victor. Both of them, all three of these have ceramic bearings, but these two just feel a little bit better. Now, I mentioned backspacers being a thing. I don't really look for them or hold it against budget knives when they don't have them, but this is one of those things that makes this knife and this knife both really good is that they both have backspacers. Now you might be wondering, well, why is that important? Why does that matter? Well, these all being EDC friendly knives means that they're going to be getting a lot of pocket time. You know what else gets a lot of time in your pocket? Things like keys and change and other EDC pocket granola, which bangs around in your pocket. You might not be worried about damaging any of these knives with that other stuff. However, anything that hits that edge means that it's going to make it less usable or dull quicker. And there's nothing that irks me more than a dull edge on a knife that you may or may not need on a daily basis. So yeah, that's why backspacers are important. They protect the edge of the blade from other crap that's in your pockets. All three of these do have reversible pocket clips. Um, however, on both the Ronin and on the Victor, the pocket clip itself, especially on the Victor, is actually hidden within the scale, whereas on the Ronin, it's inset into the scale. All of these have better pocket clip designs than the Pyrite. So what am I getting at here? Well, essentially I'm saying that all three of these are great options for the money. You can't go wrong with any of these in the $50 and under price range. I think that they're all great. However, I do take a strong stance when people tell me that the Pyrite is better than the Ronin or better than the Victor because I just disagree. And I disagree for all of those reasons that I mentioned prior. The biggest issue that I have with the Pyrite again is that slop in the blade. And guys, if you haven't noticed it before, go ahead, get out your Pyrite and shake it. Can you feel the blade moving? If you can, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That level of play is sloppy. And I think that it could potentially cause issues with lockup down the road. Maybe it means that the plunge barrel is getting dented ever so slightly. I don't know. We're going to find out when I get another pyrite because we are going to see if that issue persists. But you let me know. Do you still disagree with me? Do you still think that the CJRB pyrite is the best because such and such channel said so and they, they know? Or are you concerned about the same things that I'm concerned about? Are you concerned about the lack of a backspace? Are you concerned about the lack of a single-sided captive pivot? Uh, do you think that uh, the action is better on the Pyrite than it is on the Ronin or on the Victor? And if you do, do you have all three? Let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. I'll see you in the comment section. And if you want to see more awesome knife content, make sure you smack subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.